Okay. So, welcome to section 8.2, multiplying rational expressions. That's right, just like before, it's multiplying fractions. And you already know how to multiply fractions. I've seen you do it. So, it should be a relatively easy section. I want you to go ahead, pause the video, write these two down, and try problem A. And let's see how you do. Okay. So, oh, I'm going to use purple. For this one up here, remember you're supposed to multiply straight across. So 1 times 3 is 3, and 2 times 5 is 10, so you'd end up with 3 over 10. And then one of the other rules you have to remember is that if there's a common factor on top and on bottom, you can cross cancel them out. We don't have a common factor on top and bottom, but wait, we do. Because we know 2 goes into 4 and 2 goes into 2. So you can cancel out this 2 and say, That'll leave us with 1, because 2 goes into 2 one time. And you can cancel out the 4 and say 2 goes into 4 two times. And we just cross-canceled. Cross-canceling doesn't mean from one fraction to another. It means something on top with something on bottom. That's the key. So now that I've done that, then I can just multiply straight across. 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times 5 is 5 get 2 over 5. Nowhere here did they say anything about wanting to know anything about restrictions. So we don't have to worry about that for this section. Over here, I'm hoping this jogged a memory if you didn't get that right. Over here, in the last section, I told you the first step was to go ahead and factor everything on top and factor everything on bottom. And you can do that here too. In fact, that's really what they want you to do. But for numbers, that's not really that necessary because you already know what goes into numbers. So you can look at them and say, oh, they have a common factor. Let me go ahead and divide both by that factor. Just like we did over here, they have a common factor. I didn't list it as the Alice two times two. I could have, but I didn't. So when you can look at it and see that there's a common factor, go ahead and go with that and save yourself the time of having to rewrite it. So here we know 3 goes into 3 one time, 3 goes into 15 five times. 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 4 two times. I have two A's on the bottom and one A up there, so that A will cancel out with one of my A's down here, just leaving me with the A. I have one B on top and one B on the bottom, so those two can cancel out. Okay. So what am I left with up top? Well, just like before, we multiply straight across. So 2 times 5 is 10 up top. And then all my B and my A are gone. So that only leaves me with 10B squared up top. And on the bottom, 1 times 1 is 1. Don't even need to write it. And then I have an A. And that's as simplified as it can get. If you do all your canceling ahead of time, you won't have to reduce any in the answer. If you miss something when you're canceling, then you can always reduce your answer. Let's try another one. So this one we can't automatically see numbers that can cancel out. 
because the big deal up here is that everything is multiplied. So it's all factored already. Down here, we got all these pluses and minuses in here, and that means it's not been factored. So if we can factor it, we should go ahead and factor it. So the question is, can anything be factored? Can m minus 1 be factored? Mm, that's a big negatory. All we're going to get back out of that is m minus 1. What about 3m plus 6? Can we factor anything out of that? Well, sure we can. We can take a 3 out. That leaves me with m plus 2. So now, that's my new top, not that one. Can I take anything out of this one? Yeah, I can take a 2 out. That leaves me with m plus 2. That's convenient. Can I take anything out of that one? No. So now, do I have any factors on top that are exactly the same as the factors on the bottom? Well, I have an m minus 1 here and an m minus 1 there, but that has a 4 with it, and that is not the same as that. I can't factor the 4 out because I don't have a 4 there. So they are not the same. Well, I have a 3 on top, but I don't have a 3 on the bottom. I have an m plus 2 on the top, and I have an m plus 2 on the bottom. I can mark those out. I have a 2, but no 2 up there, and the same thing with that. So now, all I need to do is multiply the top and multiply the bottom. So 3, and then times my m minus 1 over 2, and then times my 4m minus 1. That's the answer. I know it doesn't look like we took a lot out, but that's the answer. If There is a plus or minus beside it, then it cannot cancel. Here, I can't cancel this in with that in because there's a minus beside it. Here, I could cancel this whole thing with that whole thing because they were exactly the same inside parentheses. Now, if the four had not been here, then I could cancel, even though there is no parentheses. So I didn't want to say that there had to be parentheses, but when there's a plus or minus there, you know it's not a factor. And if it's not a factor, then you can't cancel it. Okay, let's look at a couple of harder ones. There's a whole lot of factor in here that can go on. A whole lot. No GCF. Go ahead and draw my skeleton. 
two things that multiply together to give me two x squared or two x and x. Two things that multiply together to give me 12. I'm feeling six and two. But I don't think that that's right. So if I put the six there, that gives me 12 and two is not five. So I'm gonna go with four and three. Four goes here, three goes there. And then I need for it to be a minus five. So my eight would have to be negative, which makes that a plus. That's how I do it in my head without writing everything down. Sit there and talk through it, keep it all in my head. Down here, this is already pretty much factored. So I'm okay with that one. Over here, we talked in the last section, last couple of sections, they started throwing out negatives in front of your x squares and stuff. And I said, if they ever start with a negative, that means they really want you to take a negative out. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna take a negative out as well as the number three. That's gonna leave me with x plus four. Has to be a positive four because I took that negative out. Then down here, when I go to factor, I have x plus four, x minus four. Aren't you glad we learned how to factor before we tried this section? See, I told you it would come in handy. So now that I have these things, that means that all of this is done with, and we're stuck with what's written in blue. Now I need to look at it and see if there's anything I can cancel. So is there anything on top that has something in common with something on the bottom? Well, there's an x minus four on top and an x minus four on the bottom, so they can cancel each other out. And then there's an x plus four on top with the x plus four on the bottom, so they can cancel each other out. There's a two here and a three there, but that's not gonna help me here. However, since this three was multiplied by that, and that is not a subtraction sign, that's a negative, I could cancel out that three and make it a negative one instead. Cancel out the six and make it a two instead. Three goes into three one time, three goes into six two times. And then I just combine stuff back together. So I'm left with the two X plus three here and the negative one there. So that gives me negative times two X plus three on top. And then on bottom, I just have the two left. Oh, that's the two X left. And this can't cancel out with that because that's beside the plus sign. So that one isn't a factor. You should be loving this stuff as much as you like new and different things. One more. Even harder one. I want you to pause it and try it. Let's see how you do. I 
How do you get me a swig in my drink? I'm more concerned with how you do with the first one than with the second one, because the second one's got a little bit of hunky dory stuff in it. That's okay, you might have got the second part right too. Over here, when you factor, there is no GCF. So I'm going to say 3x and 2x. 7 has to be 7 and 1. So I think my 7 has to go with the 2 so that I can get that 21, subtract that 2 from to give me my 19. I need my 21 to be negative, so that one has to be positive. For this one down here, there is no GCF. So a 2x and an x. Now I'm going to show you a trick. The whole point is to cancel stuff out, right? I bet that this 2x is going to be just like that one. You know why I think that? Because then they would cancel. That's the whole point of the section, to find stuff that cancels. So that's my kind of hint to go in that direction. So I'm going to try the minus 7 and the 5. And in order for that to give me a negative, they have to be different. So it must be a plus 5. And sure enough, that's 10 and a negative 7, which gives me a positive 3. Done. The bottom one, since it's easier, two things that multiply to give me that. I'm going to jump on that same bandwagon for a second. One of those six and four gets me closer to a negative. No, I don't trust it. I'm saying this could be it. I don't know that it is. I'm just saying it's a good place to start because we know they're going to want to cancel something. So I'm going to try the 3x plus 1, which would leave me with the 8x minus 3. Check it. Negative 9x, positive 8x, boom. I'm just saying it's a good place to start. Doesn't always work. You always want to check it just to make sure, but it is always a great place to start. Keeps you from sitting there and trying every possibility with 24 that there is because you don't know. There's an iffy kind of feeling about it. Just say it's a good place to start. Now, how about this top one? We had a conversation back in the day when we were doing factoring that said that if you had an x squared in the back, since we feel more comfortable with it in the front, we should probably redo it. Put it in descending order instead of the ascending order that it's in. I said that was fine to do. So that would be negative x squared minus 37x plus 15. Then I told you that if it ever started out with a negative, the first thing you had to factor out was that negative. So now I take the negative out, like its own factor, like a whole negative one comes out, because we don't have any other numbers. So I take the negative out, that leaves me with a positive 8x squared plus 37x minus 15. Now I gotta factor that. I like this working backwards and up thing. I'm getting too short for this job. Okay. I don't have any eights and ones floating around. Oh, I do have an 8x. Yep. I bet I should use that. So 8x minus 3. Because 3 goes into 15 too. I'm just saying. So that'll put me at a 1x, and then that has to be a 5. That's a negative, so this has to be a plus. Let's check. Negative 3x, positive 40x, gives me a positive 37x. I'm just saying. They're going to be kind like that. You just have to know the book for it. So now let's cancel stuff. First of all, 
We're done with all the blue. We have factored it all out. In fact, we're done with all of this too, because we just kept factoring. Which leaves us with this. So I have a 3x plus 1 on top and a 3x plus 1 on the bottom. I have a 2x minus 7 on top and a 2x minus 7 on the bottom. I have an 8x minus 3 on top and an 8x minus 3 on the bottom. I have an x plus 5 on the bottom and an x plus 5 on the top. Look at that. Not everything canceled. I know you think it did, but it did not. What are we left with? I mean, over here, what's left on top? What we never write is left on top. There's always a one there. We never write it, but it's always there. And there's always a one here. We don't write it, but it's there. And here and here. But in this case up here, it's not just a one, it's that negative one. So one times negative one gives us negative one, and one times one gives us one, and negative one over one is negative one, which is what your answer is. Looks long, looks confusing, really simple answer. All the time. Let's talk classwork and homework. Page 322, numbers 9, 17, 19, and 27. And then homework, same page, numbers 11, 15, 21, 25, 31, and 35. And I'll see you tomorrow.